Hey guys, welcome. We're going to be stitching this cute cat today. I'm starting on the left side. You can see I already did the right side, but you're just going to be able to learn one side and mirror it on the other. So I have our pink floss here. I'm using a single strand and I'm just doing some satin stitch. And see I'm actually overlapping that line there, but just getting to the edge of the ear. The purpose of this section is, this is actually the, the back of the inner ear of the cat. So most of these stitches are actually gonna be covered with the fluffy ear fur. So basically all you need to worry about is just covering that fabric. And stitch direction, I don't think it's too important either. It's going to be hard to tell what the stitch direction is once you cover with those little ear hairs. Okay, so you can see I already did the nose. That's the only other thing you're going to do with this pink. I'm just doing the pink first just because we're only using it in a couple places just to kind of be done with it and set it aside. So for the nose, it's it's just kind of the same thing. You're gonna just do satin stitch across the little, cute little nose here. Great, so now I'm gonna move on to our dark orange. I'm just gonna take care of this ear really quick. You can do it in you know, one long stitch, or I think I'm gonna do two stitches here. Bit of a split stitch to fill this in, or you could use satin stitch. Again, we're going to come in and put some fur on top of these, so I'm not too worried. There you go. So then this dark orange, we're going to use a lot of it. We're going to use it for all of our stripes. So I'm going to start doing that. Here we have this nice little stripe on the top here. And I believe that if, you know, if you're a little worried about the long and short stitch, you could just do this orange and just do these stripes. And I think, I think he'd still look really cute. You can kind of see down on the arm here where I've done that and I haven't filled in yet with the lighter orange. And I like it. I like how it looks there. I think you could make that work. So... This is already a pretty small project, so I think it's good for beginners if you're just experimenting with thread painting. You can see, so I'm doing, I'm doing thread painting, I'm doing long and short stitch, so I'm trying to split those stitches. I like to come down on the stitch because I feel like I can aim better. Just like that. I probably need another row here. Probably for that top stripe too. So you may have noticed that I already had some stitches in place. Sorry about that. So what I had done was I came in with the brown and I just did back stitch. I did back stitch on the mouth and I did back stitch for the eyes. And then I added a couple stitches with the really, that light, light color that it's almost like off white. I, I did that around the eye here. You can see the stitches like here in here. Uh, and I will be going back and doing more of that. So I'm, I'm sorry, I, um, this is actually, take two <laughs> and I had some issues with the first video and I couldn't bring myself to cut those stitches out because um, I, th I think you guys should be able to figure it out how to just do that back stitch and 
those little light stitches there. You can see I'm just kind of doing random stitches. I'm just trying to cover that orange with this orange. And luckily it's a cat, so it's furry. So we're gonna have texture here. You know, if we're doing thread painting to do like a flower petal or a leaf, we're trying to keep the thread painting really smooth, right? And so I think you have to like pay a lot more attention to where your stitches are going and what direction they need to be. and making sure they all face the same way. And there's just a lot more freedom when you're doing thread painting of an animal. So here I want you to see that I'm, see I'm like definitely way outside my guideline and that is super okay because we're gonna come back with that lighter color and we're gonna be doing some overlapping. So we're gonna be doing this like back and forth dance between the two colors. So you want that overlap or um, if I didn't have that, when I would come in with that lighter color, I may cover too much of this orange and lose the stripe completely. So that's what my thought process is on that. And you can see I, you know, I kind of danced around on that stripe itself. You know, I kind of go across and figure out where I want to be and then go back and fill in the little gaps. I'm just going to keep going with this fur, the darker orange, just filling in all these stripes all the way down. If you've seen any of my other tutorials with thread painting animals, or any thread painting actually, um, you may have seen me do like a base layer with two strands of floss first to kind of save some time. It's not like a that's not how you're supposed to do it. Uh, and it does add more texture and it's just, um, something I do sometimes. So for this cat, I did not do that. I just think two strands would be too thick. Where do you come from? Um, I, yeah. So that's why I went with a single strand for the whole, whole kitty. I think I have some, a little knot in the back here. Uh, okay, we're gonna let it be. So that's one thing I don't like about using these clamps is, uh, well, the clamp I have at least. Uh, I am using a table vise, just like from the hardware store. <laughs> it's not designed to be for embroidery, but it works really well. It, I, the thing I love about it is that it holds my work very, very still. Uh, I have a floor embroidery stand from the craft store and I am not a fan of it because it is just wobbly, wobbly, wobbly. All right, I just closed my office door because I'm running the dishwasher and like the second I close my door, the dang cats show up and start trying to ram through it. Okay, so why did I just skip that whole spot and jump over here? I don't know. It's just, now I'm working back this direction. I just go random. As long as you're filling it. I think the key is when you're going, when you're thinking about doing this thread painting with fur, I mean, the most important thing is coverage. You kind of get a little help with that if you have the kit and the pre-printed fabric because... You know, I'm trying to cover orange fabric right now, which is easier than if I was using orange and trying to cover like fluorescent purple fabric, right? It'd be harder to hide that. So like when I did the original version of the cat, you know, I did him on the blue fabric and it was actually 
it was hard. Like I had to do a lot more layers than I thought I would to cover. Oh, one thing I want to say while I'm over here. So obviously I'm just stitching the cat. I'm sorry, I'm not stitching the entire piece, but you'll probably want to do the, well, you'll probably want to do the flowers first, right? Because they're covering here. It's up to you if you want to do the grass first or not. Like I did the grass afterwards. I did not have grass like under the flowers and then cover the grass with the flowers. You're not going to have enough floss to do that. Um, enough of the green. So what I did is I just, I did the flowers and then I did the grass up to the big flowers and the grass up to the shape here. I did these little flowers on top of the green, but not these ones, not the big ones and the medium ones. So then at this point, when you're doing the, the fur here, you want it to overlap the grass stitches because right, the cat's on top of the grass. And then the flowers are in front of the cat. So that's just something to think about when you're when you're doing the stitches and trying to figure out what order to do them in. Oh, and then at the end, I went back and added a couple more strands of the grass by the cat's feet. So it looked like, you know, there was that overlap too. So... Oh, here with the stitch direction, you know, from the face, it's, you know, radial from the nose, and then you have this, like, gravity happening at the edges. So that's what I'm calling that, radial with gravity. <laughs> and then for the body, it's all pretty much down, um, but you want to add a little bit of variety because it's fur, right? When in doubt, go find a cat to look at. So hopefully you guys understand what that's supposed to look at. You can, I was going to go all the way down, but then I realized, you know, I already did it on the right side. So I think you guys can see. I'm actually probably not going to stitch this whole cat even off camera. I think I'm going to maybe just frame the face like in a pendant for a necklace. I think that'd be cute. And it's less stitching. <laughs> I wouldn't have to do the whole thing. I was thinking maybe I'd do like a a flower by his ear or something or I don't know if I would do a flower crown maybe a tiny one okay so now I have the light orange and I'm coming in here and I'm just filling in the gaps so here I am kind of filling in where those light stitches are 
And I'm doing some overlap onto the ear. I'm actually gonna come back with really light color to do the big, like the eyelashes and the whiskers and the fluffy ear hair. So this is, you know, some overlap is good, but this is mostly just to fill in that fur. So. stitch in here. And then fill in here. So what I did on my original one, I, I did the eyes and the mouth like this, and then I came back and did them again at the end because I had some stitches that were covering them a little bit and I wanted them to stand out more. So I'll see how this goes. If they still stand out well, then I'll just leave them. If I feel like I need to do another lap, I will. I think the hardest part about thread painting is that first stitch and also trying to make it through the awkward phase. Just keep stitching, basically. <laughs> it's they all look, mine look really weird like when you first start. And when you're in a phase like this, like, it's like, gosh, is this really gonna, what's this gonna look like? You just gotta go with it. And again, that coverage is important and the blending is important. So you can see that I'm, I'm, I'm actually splitting a single strand here. Not every time, I don't always get it. Because it's hard to do, right? And it... Oh, jeez. <laughs> Here. <laughs> I'm laughing. I just had to, like, pause the video and get out one of those. And another one just showed up right away. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, this single strand of floss is actually made up of two, like, micro strands of floss that are twisted together. So when I split it, that's when I'm splitting. But again, you know, you don't you don't have to. As long as you're getting that overlap. If you're actually going in between two stitches versus splitting a single stitch, like that's fine too. And like right here, obviously it's more of a satin stitch to fill in this shape. Let's see, and then I'll go from below. So yeah, I'm just going to take this color and fill in all the gaps, excluding there's that darker place by the arms, like where the tummy is. And I'll speak to that when we get there. We're just going to add in that brown. We're also going to use um, some of the brown to add some variation to our dark stripes. And for shadow, obviously. Uh, but it helps. Like, if you look at cat fur, or a human's hair, <laughs> you know, it's not just one color. There's so many colors in there, and depending on the lighting. I mean, so the more colors you use, the more realistic your thread painting's going to be. In this case, we are only using four, which I think also makes it good for beginners, because it's not too overwhelming trying to keep track of where all the colors are and what they are and mixing them up because they're so close in color. So for our dark stripes, <laughs> technical difficulties, for our dark stripes we're gonna add a little bit of that brown for that variety. Just a tiny bit. You won't even notice it's there unless you're looking for it. But it'll create a more realistic looking cat. And then the same with that light color, that off-white that we have around the eyes and that we're going to use for the whiskers. 
we're going to put a little bit of that in the background fur that I'm doing right now. I'm going to use it as a highlight and just add a little bit of variation. So I'm definitely going to show you that. But first you got to do the stripes and then fill in with this lighter orange. If you want to do it opposite, like do the background this color first and then do the darker orange stripes on top, it's totally fine. Stitcher's choice. But again, I'm just trying to cover any fabric. I'm not worried too much about where I go when, as long as everything gets covered. It might be helpful to use magnification if you use reading glasses or I got some of these cool jewelers glasses for doing really really small stuff uh, good lighting will help you as well make sure you can see where you're going make sure you are covering everything up Great, so now I'm going to show you how to make an arm stand out. I guess they're not arms. They're legs. They're front legs. Excuse me. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put in this brown where it needs to go. I already did a little bit of the dark orange here, but we can pretend I didn't, or we can. It doesn't matter. So I'm putting in the brown up to my guideline here. And it's okay that I already have that stitching there. This is kind of where that back and forth comes in. You know, there's going to be overlap. And in the very end, you can come back in and do any little details to help clarify if it doesn't make sense because <laughs> really you want the fur from the front legs to overlap the fur from the back legs so you want to do that by doing these stitches first probably However, like the way I work is I, you know, I kind of put in the, the base layers, in this case with a single strand, usually, usually when I'm referring to the base layers, it's like with the two strands, but, um, and then come back and do those highlights and lowlights and details. Okay, and then we would do the same thing on the other side here. These stitches are more vertical. These ones kind of uh, flare out from the body. My female cat has a really puffy tummy. I mean, they all female cats that I've had have that um, parachute. <laughs> 
I don't know, there's different, there's different, like, words for it, and they're all really funny. That's the only one I can think of right now, but just that pouch. But it's so soft. It's like the best fur. <laughs> oh, I love my cats. But my male cat, he doesn't have it. He's younger. So I don't know if that's it, or I'm not used to male cats, so I'm not sure I can't speak to that. And my female cat was called Kirby by the vet, the vet the last time we went in. Uh, well, that was like last year, but when I went in this year, they didn't say anything about her being Kirby, and she's actually the same weight as the male cat. So, but it's weird, like their body shapes are completely different. And even though we said she was Kirby, I make sure to tell her that she's beautiful, like every day, because she is. She's really beautiful. Okay. So I'm just going to stop here and then show you guys. So here I'm, I'm parking my needle over here. That works for some people. Usually it doesn't work for me because I end up getting all tangled on it. But you could potentially have every single color going at once. Just like still connected and just kind of going back and forth. If that works for you, awesome. It doesn't work for me. Alright, so... Here I am with my lighter orange. So what I would do here is I'm just going to make sure I get a little bit of overlap onto the back of that. And by the back of that, I mean a little overlap on that thigh, we'll call it, the back leg. So I'd fill in this whole shape. I don't know if you need to see that. I'm hoping to just get away with doing the edges. We'll see. So I'm just creating a line here. And then also at the very edge here of the back leg, there's a little bit of lightness as well. That's more of a highlight. So I can come and fill that in. I took a break and, and took a look at the, the face up close and I could see all the holes in it. You guys, you guys can probably see it from where you are, but I'm actually behind the camera. You are closer, which makes me, it actually makes me really nervous because you can see better and I can what I'm doing. Okay, so something like this. And if you want to have like, you know, some kind of more crazier fur. So like, see how this one's like crazy, right? Versus just kind of more straight down. So that'll give you kind of a more scruffy look. Like the one I did, like the model one I did. It's pretty scruffy. He looks like Tom, the cat that lives in our neighborhood. I actually don't know if that's his name, but he is orange. And he is a little bit scruffy. He's seen some stuff. I actually saw a bobcat in our neighborhood the other day. You gotta be careful out there, Tom. Actually, in the spring, sometimes the bears come by and go through people's garbages and bird feeders <laughs> trying to get a snack okay so hopefully that makes sense what I'm doing here I'm just doing a little bit of this filling in whoa oh so I just I just snagged that needle I parked which is why I don't like parking needles <laughs> Other people can manage it better than I can. I think if I wasn't using the clamp, I'd have a better time because I could keep a better idea, uh, better eye on what's going on in the back. So I don't know if I ever finished the story about my stand. So I had like a wooden hoop stand, and it, it did allow you to flip over 
your hoop so you could check out the back. That was the nice part about it. But it was just so wobbly. It was horrible. And really the only time I use clamps is when I'm doing a video. So it just really didn't make sense. I still have it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But I don't use it. I should probably sell it. Okay. We're filling it in. Filling it in. All right, so let's go ahead and finish. So I ended up filling in these spaces here with that light orange, and now I have the brown, the dark brown. I'm gonna go in and kind of work from top down doing some detail work. So wherever I have those dark orange stripes, I'm gonna just add like a stitch or two of this brown just to make it more rich, to give it some variety. My intention is just to kind of stick to the right side. Maybe not, maybe I'll do all of it. <laughs> I definitely want to go back and make sure these eyes are going to pop. stripes over here nice and dark I'm not like just going over everything like that that would be silly I'm just kind of adding a little dimension I guess I am gonna do the other side of the face since I'm here <laughs> save me some time later Here, oops, just gonna add a, oh my, getting tangled on everything. <laughs> That's another thing about the, uh, the clamps is they have little, um, you know, parts <laughs> and it's easy to get caught up on them. So let's see, over on this side of the face, I'm gonna add another dark stitch and then here's this stripe. Add a couple dark stitches. Just a couple. This little uh, stripe, I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna touch that one. It's kind of a subtle uh, double chin situation happening. Okay, so you're going to do that on both sides with all the stripes. Uh, you can see kind of the thigh on this side is um, a little scruffy here. So if you need to come in and help with blending, that's something you can do as well. Oh, also the little toe lines are done with this color. I haven't completely filled in 
my paws down here, but the toe lines are just going to look like two little stitches with this darker color. Like that. Okay. So back up at the face, I'm actually going to add a couple more stitches. This eye, I think, needs to be accentuated a little bit. Also, if you look at my sample piece, you can see I also outlined the nose. Sometimes cats will have some more dark fur around the nose. So that would just be a little stitch here. And here. Maybe even one on top. I don't think I'm going to, but you could. Just like that. And then come back here. Cool. Alright, so now I'm going to come in with my off-white color. I'm going to trace around the eyes again here. I had done this at the beginning. But I didn't get it on camera, but just so you can see. It's kind of outlining the eyes, the light color. It'll really help them stand out. So that's on the top and then also on the bottom here. Alright, so then we can go ahead and do our um, eyelashes and our tufts of fur here. These are just going to kind of cover the ear and they're kind of crazy <laughs> and long. Something like that, and then the eyelashes come from just above the eye, and usually there's kind of a weird long one, this, and the shorter one. Okay, we'll go to the other side. It looks like antenna. <laughs> And then these. Okay, and then we of course need whiskers. So, let's see what I did here. So most of them I did with two stitches to give them a little curve. Okay. Kind of an out, and then a bit of a, bit of that uh, radial, <laughs> radial direction with gravity. So after you do those whiskers, you can come in and add some little highlights. Wow, I'm struggling today with my needles. <laughs> so go ahead and add some highlights. Uh, like we added the low lights with the brown onto the dark orange, we're going to add highlights using this lighter color on our light orange. So just add some 
random little stray hairs that are catching the light. And if you find that you put these in and they stand out too much, you can always then go back with that light orange and uh, kind of cover them up a little bit so they're not so bright. So what I wanted to show you though is, so I like to do some like on the edges, like the sun's catching these little furs. Uh, but I wanted to show you, so I, I like to use it to help, like, the arm stand out. So what I would do, oops, I said arm again, the front leg. <laughs> so here I would be sure to add some stitches on the edge here where the front leg is, you know, we want it to stand out from that back. Like this. If you did my craftsy class with the bear cub pattern, this is like identical. I mean, obviously it's not because it's a cat, but the same kind of um, same kind of deal here, where we're adding the, the highlights, kind of help the eye, you know, see a three dimensional cat when when looking here. So it's like that, and we can even add a couple at the edge here if you wanted. Cool. Ugh stuck on my stand again. I can't tell you how many times I've had snags and knots while working on this cat today. Just have like bad floss mojo. I don't know. It means lots of editing. <laughs> That's okay. Kitty looks good. So I'm just gonna keep adding those little light highlights. I think that's it.